lately I've been on a trend of creating things for my plants, things like a trellis and pot. And as someone new to 3D printing, planters seemed like a natural choice. They're simple and functional, and because of that, they allow for a lot of creativity and experimentation. Plus, I have plenty of plants that need new homes, so I figured why not continue exploring this idea to learn more about 3D printing. So I decided to try out a concept inspired by Minecraft, specifically a dirt block. I've also been working with a technique called filament painting in a software called Hueforge. Basically, this process lets me add a variety of colors to my 3D prints by controlling how the filament is applied. Now, I don't have a ton of filament colors on hand, but with this method, printing in layers that allow colors to show through underneath, you can still achieve something vibrant without needing a spool of every specific color. If you're curious to learn more about this process, you can check out my Zelda tarot card video where I go into more detail on how it works. This technique seemed perfect for what I was imagining with the Minecraft pod. It would allow me to achieve that pixel-like aesthetic and create something that looks like it's straight out of the game. A simple cube with clean edges, but detailed enough to stand out as a unique piece in my plant collection. Plus, since getting a multicolor 3D printer, I've realized that filament changes can lead to a lot of artifacts. And this process really helps optimize that by reducing waste while still achieving a detailed multicolored print. To design this, I referenced images of the Minecraft dirt block and felt a modular approach would work best to cut down on printing time. So I split the design into two main components, the dirt and the grass. The idea being that the grass would act as a sort of lid to complete the box shape. So I'd create two very thin base pieces for the top and bottom sections. Then with filament painting, I'd create pixel-like panels for each side, and in total, nine panels, four for the bottom section and five for the top. I took measurements of this plant's pot specifically since it's currently in a clear one and I wanted to create a cover for it. The diameter is about 5.25 inches and the height is around 5 inches. So I use these dimensions to inform the design. When working in a 3D program for 3D printing, you typically use millimeters. So in Blender, my primary program, I set up the file accordingly. I first created the dirt base piece, which was a simple cube with the top removed. I controlled the thickness using a solidify modifier, setting it to one millimeter. Then I printed it out. I had never printed anything this thin before, so it came out a bit warped, but it was fine for what I needed. After checking that the base piece was a good fit, I moved on to creating the first dirt pixel panel. I only wanted the cover to go about three fourths of the way up since the rest would be obscured by the grass part. So I took measurements and created a new file in Adobe Illustrator. What I love about filament painting is the texture that you can achieve, which is heavily influenced by the color value and luminance of an image. To create the pixel effect, I set up rows of 16 squares to fit the width of the panel. Then I randomly applied four grayscale colors with varying values to the squares. Unfortunately, Illustrator doesn't seem to have a select random feature, which is surprising to me. I remember running into the same issue about eight years ago, and I thought they would have fixed it by now, but I guess not. So I ended up creating a script to execute this function. Now, the 3D printer that I'm using is a Bamboo Lab P1S with a single AMS, and this allows me to switch between four colors. For my first experience, the closest filament colors I had to match the dirt block were dark brown, latte, and tan. I wanted one more color to intensify the pixel effect, so I used white as a substitute. In Hue Forge, I imported those colors and adjusted the sliders that control each layer. Instead of the white appearing as a true white, it showed up as a pale beige, which was more cohesive. It takes a bit of experimenting swapping out filaments, but it's a powerful technique if you want to achieve different shades without having a specific color on hand. Once I was done, I took it into my slicer software, Bamboo Studio, and printed it out. The first attempt looked great, but it turned out a bit too thin. To fix that, I referenced a channel called Hue Forging, and I believe it's run by the creator of Hue Forge, which was extremely helpful. The adjustments worked, except I didn't update the dimensions correctly in both Hue Forge and Bamboo Studio, so the print ended up with only three colors and a slightly different hue. On my third attempt, everything came out as intended, and I moved on to assembling the panels. 
I used only what I had on hand, which was super glue and weights in the form of books and tape dispensers. After it dried, I really liked how it was shaping up, so I moved on to creating the grass top. I wanted this piece to fit over the dirt block while also holding the pot securely in place since its diameter was slightly smaller than the dirt block itself. To achieve this, I extruded both the inner and outer edges. Once again, I used the solidify modifier to control the thickness but I applied it incorrectly, which resulted in a messed up print. I learned it's important to toggle even thickness under the solidify modifier before applying it when working with oddly shaped objects. I ended up stopping the print halfway, but it was enough to check if it fit the design. It did, so I fixed the geometry and reprinted it completely. Afterward, I moved on to creating the pixel panels for the top. Since HueForge can accommodate transparent images, I was able to shape them to appear jagged just like in the reference. I used the same grayscale values for shading, but when it came to color, I didn't have many green options available. I only had the standard bamboo green filament, and while I did have a matte green, I chose not to use it since it was very similar in value. Fortunately, the bamboo green alone worked perfectly. For the AMS setup, I used dark brown, white, tan, and bamboo green. Then in Hue Forge, I adjusted the settings so that the primary hue for the top piece was green, giving it the vibrant grassy look I was aiming for. I also made sure to use the same settings to maintain the same thickness I had with the dirt panels. Once it was done, I glued the pixel panels to the grass lid and started printing the remaining ones, and everything was shaping up nicely. For some reason, I hadn't thought to print multiple HueForge projects on the same bed before, but I did it here, and it saved a lot of time and filament changes. Unfortunately, when printing multiple panels at once, one of them got a bit messed up, so I just trimmed off some of the excess. The last panel I needed to create was the top one, and I used the same approach as before, then glued it in place. Now, it looked fine at this point, but I wanted to add a bit more detail to the grass portion. So I created these pixel flowers using the same technique as before. I designed them in Illustrator and made them much thicker in Hue Forge to intensify the texture. I wanted them to be yellow, but I only had one yellow filament, so I used tan and white to create a range of shades. I ended up creating eight flowers and printed them all on the same bed. Then I glued them on, lining up with the pixel pattern on each side. And that was it! I placed my Calathea plant in the pot and it fit perfectly. I love how it turned out and I think the bright green and brown colors really complement the plant. Overall, I'm super happy with this project. Filament painting was great in helping me achieve that iconic pixelated look and the modular design made the assembly process a lot easier. This has definitely inspired me to create more gaming related items in the future. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you'd like to see more creative 3D prints or follow my 3D printing journey, you can check out some of my other videos. And if you have any other questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to leave them below. Thanks again and see you all in the next video.